This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris Effects, a leading developer of visual effect plugins, titling, video editing, and workflow tools for broadcast, post production, and film professionals. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And one thing that I like about doing these tutorials is that I'm always challenged. And in this case, I was challenged immediately after I posted my last tutorial on the updates to Multicam inside of 2019.7 of Avid Media Composer. And basically the challenge was posed to me, well, Kev, I want to do an offline. I have 4K media and what I'd like to do is I'd like to do an offline of that, but I have multicam footage. So how would I go about taking that 4K original media, doing an offline multicam and then relinking to the original 4K material to then transcode and export for the client. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about 4K multicam offline and online inside of Avid Media Composer. All right, now before we get into Media Composer to start working, what I'm going to do is I'm going to Command or Alt and Tab into Firefox because I do want to point out that if you are going to be working with red footage or following along in this lesson, you will need the red AMA plugin for Avid Media Composer. It is a completely free download and I will link to it in the notes below this tutorial. So don't worry about having to copy down this website, like I said, I will put the link in the notes below this tutorial. Okay, so let's hide out of Firefox. Let's Command or Alt and Tab into Avid Media Composer. And once we're there, let's just double check the type of project that we are working in. We are working in a 1080p 23976 project because we are doing an offline of our 4K red footage. Then we're going to be finishing in Ultra HD. So let's get that red footage in here. And because I have the red AMA plugin installed, I'm going to come to input. I'm going to come to source browser. I'm going to come to my media drive. Let me just bring out the source browser window just a little bit here. I'm going to come into my footage folder. I have a folder called appropriately enough red. I'm simply going to select all of the folders in there. And once I have them selected, I'm going to say link to link to these clips inside of my project. Now you'll see here that I have nine clips and we're not gonna be working with those nine clips only because I am working with a USB drive and to be honest, my poor little drive will have a heart attack if I'm trying to play back all nine streams at the same time, even though we will be consolidating, pardon me, transcoding this footage. We cannot consolidate it because it is not an Avid friendly codec, the red codec. So. What do we need to take into consideration first? Well, if we're going to be doing this off online correctly, we need to take a look at the aspect ratio of the footage that we're going to be working with or doing our multicam with. So what I've done is I've created a bin view called appropriately enough red offline. Now, the reason that I created this bin view or this column layout is because I want to see the format more specifically the aspect ratio. You'll notice that with these two clips, they have an aspect ratio of 2.33 to one and the rest of them have an aspect ratio of 1.78 to 1, which is 16 by 9, which matches the UHD project we'll be finishing with, and it matches the current 1920 by 1080, 23976 frame per second raster dimension. Now, what I've also done just to make things even more interesting, because we are talking about multicam, is I've thrown in a couple of frame rates that actually don't match our project's frame rate at all, but don't worry about it. Media Composer can handle all of that with no problems. Now, as of this recording, I'm using version 2019.7 of Media Composer, so keep that in mind if you are following along. All right, now before we even get in and set these clips up for multicam, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete a couple of them here. Let's just delete these two. So we'll deal with six clips when doing our multicam. Now I'm gonna stick with my two that are a different raster dimension, and then our four that are the same raster dimension as my project. So first thing, I'm gonna select both clips. We're gonna right click, we're gonna to come to our source settings. Now keep in mind that if you were to come to the linked plugin section of the source settings window, this is where you can get in and alter the red parameters that are attached 
to these clips. Now, this is, of course, if you are working with RED footage. If you're working with, you know, let's say footage that was shot in an Alexa and there are ProRes files, you won't have access to this, but it's one of the advantages to working with RED footage. Now, for us, I'm not going to be getting in and making any adjustments like that because this is a multicam lesson, not a color or color correction lesson. So, what we're going to do is head on over to FrameFlex. Now, you'll see that we have some information at the top of the window telling us that the image size is 4480 by 1920 with an image aspect ratio of 2.33 to 1. Now, we don't want to alter anything in there. What we do want to alter is the frame flex aspect ratio, which is going to be 16 by 9. So there we go. You'll see that we now have this image looking more like it should, as opposed to being squashed in to fill the frame. Now, what I want to do in this case is apply this frame flex setting to all of the clips. I only had two of them, but that's okay. We're going to apply that to all of the clips and then we're going to say okay. Now you'll see there are the two clips that now via frame flex have the proper aspect ratio for our 16 by 9 raster dimension and we're now ready to get in and transcode this footage to a lower resolution for us to work with. Now this does bring up an interesting, I'm not going to say problem, but it does bring up an interesting situation. I'm going to select all the clips, I'm going to right click on them, and I'm going to come down to consolidate and transcode. Now you'll remember before I said we won't be consolidating because red footage is not an avid friendly codec, or codec, we will be transcoding this footage. Now how everybody's accustomed to working in low res when it comes to larger than HD projects is oh, DNX HD 36, DNX HD 36, which yes, DNX, DNX HD 36 in most cases is what you would be working with. And you'll see right there, target video resolution, DNX HD 36, except for one small problem. You'll see right above DNX HD 36 is a little checkbox that says convert to project frame rate, which I do not want to do. I want to leave all of these clips with the frame rate of the clips, or the native basic frame rate of these clips. So what we're going to do is I'm going to say keep the source's frame rate. Now as soon as I do that, the target video resolution changes. You'll see I now have, because I am on a Mac, I do have access to the Apple ProRes codecs. If you're on Windows, you'll have access to the DNX HR codecs, which if you're doing an offline, chances are you'll be using DNX HR low bandwidth. For me, because I'm on a Mac, we'll be going with Apple ProRes 422 proxy. Now, if I want to get in, bake in things like the color encoding and frame flex, we can do that right here. I'm going to make sure I have the correct drive selected. And now what I'm going to do is simply transcode these clips for us to work with. Now it's going to take a minute or two to transcode these clips. What we're going to do is come back in a second and we're going to get into the actual multicam editing of this footage and then how we're going to convert it back to its original 4K media for us to transcode in Ultra HD. All right, and we are back. And as you can see, we now have our clips that were transcoded to 1920 by 1080 at their native frame rates as well as our original link to red clips. Now I'm just going to delete the link to clips because I do not need them. And as opposed to going in and marking an endpoint in each one of the clips, I just want to go right from the beginning of each one of them. So we're simply going to select all the clips. I'm going to right click. We're going to come down to group clips. We'll select by endpoints, which will give it to us right from the beginning of each one of the clips. I'll say OK. Let's take our group clip. We're just going to drop it into a new timeline. I'm going to hit the old nine split there just so that we now have all of our clips. And you'll now see that based on their length, they will now appear or disappear when we run out of footage. Now, just for my own sanity here, what I'm going to do is just put this in low res because again, my poor little USB external hard drive might not be able to handle all six streams playing back in real time. That's okay, obviously your mileage will vary based on the hardware you have attached to your system. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to hit play. I'm going to use the number pad on my keyboard, more specifically the 7, 8, and 9, and 4, 5, 6 keys to just do a very, very basic edit, multicam edit in between these clips. Let's see if we can get to that flower shot before it disappears. Perfect. And again, we'll just cycle through. There it goes, it disappeared, no worries. I'll just hit stop right there. 
And I'm just gonna shorten this timeline down now so that we have only the clips that we did the multicam with. Now, before we get in and relink these clips, what we are going to want to do is to commit our multicam edits because when we get in and transcode, we want to make sure that we're not transcoding any more than we need because keep in mind, this is not a low res HD transcode we're going to be doing. This is going to be an ultra HD, in our case, transcode that is going to take up, I'll say, a significant amount of hard drive space. I mean, for us, 10 seconds, not that much, but you know, you might very well have, you know, 15, 10 minute multicam segments that you're going to need to then relink and transcode in Ultra HD. So you wanna make sure that you have as much free hard drive space as possible. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna call this timeline 4K HD offline multicam, all right? And what we're going to do is with this, you'll see that I had said that if I right click, I still have access to those multicam angles. So what we wanna do with this timeline is right click on it, I'm gonna come down to commit multicam edits. I'm gonna be warned by Media Composer, changes are going to be made, but a copy of the original sequence will be created before it is updated. So I will say okay. I'm gonna hit Command or Control and T on the keyboard to expand my columns out, very nice. And you'll see now that we now have one called HD Offline Multicam no groups. Now I'm just gonna delete that copy at the end there because I don't really need that. And you'll now see that if I right click on any of those clips, I do not have access to the multicam angles. If I wanted to make adjustments to those angles, what I would do is just hop into trim mode and make any adjustments that I need to make. Also, I can now get in and do any color correction that I wanna do by simply applying the color correction effect to any one of these clips and getting in and doing the work we need. Now, obviously I'd recommend doing that once we relink in Ultra HD, so you're looking at the color that you need to see. Okay, so what do we do now? Now for me purposely, because I'm done you know, with the multicam, I'm gonna come in and just delete the one that has the groups with it because I'm not going back to that now, I'm done. If you'd like to take it, stick it into another bin so that you always have it, by all means, work the way that you wanna work in this situation. So now that we have our 4K HD offline multicam no group timeline, I'm now gonna delete the media that I had transcoded in low res. Now again, keep in mind, these clips aren't very long, but you could be dealing with hours and hours and hours of offline media that once you get in and start working in Ultra HD, you're gonna need all that hard drive space. So I'm simply gonna select it. I'm gonna select those 14 associated media files and I'm going to say, okay. Now, the other reason that I delete the media is in a lot of cases, what happens if you don't, if you just unlink the media, when you go to relink it, what Media Composer is gonna do is say, oh, okay. Well, he just wants to relink to that 1080p 25422 proxy footage and just keep relinking to that. So we're gonna delete all of the actual media files so everything will go offline. Once we've done that, what we're now gonna do is with our clips, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna come down to relink. Now this is normally the window that drives editors under their console into the fetal position, you know, crying like a baby, because to be honest, for the longest time, this window never really worked very well, but I'll be honest with you, I really have had few problems with the relink window, if any, when relinking from in our case, our 1080p offline to our 4K online footage. Let me show you how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna navigate down to our source name inside the relink by, and I'm gonna change that from the tape name or source file ID, which is what the default is for this setup, and I'm gonna change it to tape name or source file name. What you also wanna make sure is that instead of having the video format of current project only selected, you wanna have any video format selected. This way it's gonna look for your original 4K media. And last but certainly not least, which is what's important for us, is because we're working with clips that are a different frame rate from our project, we wanna make sure that we're going to allow to relink across rates. What I'm now going to do is simply say, okay, I'll give Media Composer a second, and you'll see, boom, immediately my bin updates. I'm just going to hit Command or Control and T again to expand those columns out. And you'll now see that if I come to any one of these clips here, let's just come to our woman working in the field here. I'm just gonna match frame that clip and I'm gonna say find bin. This now relinks back to the original red 4K media. Now, 
Also very important, I'm going to right click on one of those clips that have a 2, 3, 3 to 1 aspect ratio. I'm going to come into our source settings and you'll see that our source settings, our frame flex settings are still set to be 16 by 9, much as we originally had it set. So now the question, are we ready to get in and to retranscode this footage to Ultra HD? Not quite. First thing we need to do is to switch our project over. Let's switch our project from 1080p 2396 to Ultra HD 23976p. Once Media Composer updates, what we're going to do is close. We're now ready to select those clips and to transcode them. Ah, not the way that I just had it set up. Why is that? Well, if I come back to my clips here, you'll see that if I select the clips like such and I get in and transcode them, they're going to be the original duration of the clips when I linked them originally. But our timeline is only 12 seconds long, so why would I want to bring in four to five times as much media than I have to? Well, I don't. All I need to now do is to select my timeline. I'm going to right click. I'm going to come down to Consolidate Transcode. We're going to make sure Transcode selected. Select the handles that you would like to have. In this case, it's two seconds on either side, just in case you want to put a transition in. I'm not going to create a new sequence, but I am going to make sure to keep the source's frame rate and I'm going to set the target video resolution to be DNX HRHQ. With that selected, I'm now ready to come down and transcode only the clips that I need from that timeline so that we don't fill up our hard drive with any unnecessary media. All right, now as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you to check out our sponsors, Video Guys, for all of your Avid software and hardware, as well as thousands of other products that you can check out over at videoguys.com. I also want to give a big shout out to the team at Boris Effects, makers of BCC, Sapphire, and Mocha. And don't forget to use that coupon code of MC101 to get 10% off your next BCC license. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget, if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, don't hesitate to send them to me at Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.